What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this upload, we will be talking Tony Khan's massive statement regarding Mercedes Monet, FKA Sasha Banks. And if these words hold true, why it will be a true game changer. We're also going to talk Ronda Rousey, a follow up from last night's upload. And Rousey, of course, recently trashing and bashing World Wrestling Entertainment. Well, as it turns out, that wasn't even all of it. I have another paragraph that we are just now being privy to, and she is even more scathing than anything we went over last night. I'm going to I'm gonna give you guys the actual quote from Ronda Rousey, and this paragraph, she does not hold back at all. She tells you exactly her feelings on WWE as it stands, and if she will ever go back. At this point, you would have to question would WWE have her back? <laughs> because after you guys hear this paragraph, after you hear what Rhonda said, I think it's pretty obvious they're just going to go their separate ways and probably remain there. But we're going to have a follow-up uh, to that big story that we talked last night. So that's all coming up. But first and foremost, some breaking news. Unfortunately, a top talent on SmackDown looks to be shelved. Um, and this is not an entering competitor, at least not of, as of yet, but it is Nick Aldis, the general manager in apparent torn triceps has shelved Nick Aldis. Now, because he's a general manager, I guess you could still have him a part of the show, put him up in a sling, sit him down for the two hours. You could still work around him, obviously, because he still is a big part of this show with just a couple weeks left before mania. But a torn triceps in what is being described as a freak accident for Nick Aldis. So that's just something to keep an eye on. We're still getting that word in. Again, I just got that about a half an hour ago before this recording. Nick Aldis with an apparent torn triceps injury. We'll keep an eye on that. I'll have any uh, updates for you guys as they come in. Also, we are getting word that Asuka is remaining off the road. They have pulled Asuka from the road in all future live events. Asuka was injured with an undisclosed injury on Friday's SmackDown. We're still trying to learn a lot more about that. Raquel Rodriguez has been pulled off the road as well. We do believe that she is still dealing with what took her off the road beforehand. Uh, we won't get into that. We will wish her the very best. Um... But Raquel Rodriguez has been pulled as well. So that's the injury report. And uh, really just kind of ravaging through the female, female division right now. And Nick Aldis, the general manager. You talk about freak accidents. Um, so we'll keep an eye on that, obviously. So let's go into real quick. If you don't mind, we'll go over the update from last night's upload. Ronda Rousey. Get a swig of coffee because this is massive, man. This is probably the most powerful thing she said. It trumps anything we talked last night. So Ronda Rousey says, and, and this is an actual, uh, this is a quote, guys. Another thing that people don't know. Behind the scenes. Oh, yeah. How much of an absolute shit show it is at WWE. They can't hold the sword over my head and hold me hostage with my own career. And I don't need anything from them. And I don't intend on going back. So I can actually say everything that I think and feel where everybody else that is still held captive by that organization cannot. That is so damn powerful. We got to say it again, man. Another thing people don't know behind the scenes how much of an absolute shit show it is at the WWE. They can't hold the sword over my head and hold me hostage with my own career, and I don't need anything from them, and I don't intend on going back. So I can say everything that I think and feel when everybody else that is still held captive by that organization cannot. She's talking it, about it like it's a straight prison. Everybody else that's there, they're held captive so they can't speak their mind. Now, it's clear that she's had conversations with everybody in that locker room. I doubt very much that it's just her that has been having these conversations with herself, right? So how many other people feel the same way? How many more of the ladies feel the same way? You got to believe there's more because she's saying 
so many of the others are still held captive so they cannot speak out on this. But then the question is, is it too late when they do? I mean, they're sitting back and collecting all the money in the paychecks. So if ever in the future they get released, is that when they just open up, try to sell some books? <laughs> you know, your credibility will kind of be tainted if you don't stand up for yourself and what you believe in during the moment, not after the moment. It's what Ronda Rousey is kind of being ridiculed by now. Once like Seth Rollins, Seth Rollins says that one of the biggest reasons why Ronda Rousey couldn't hack it was the travel, keeping up with training while on the road, making all the towns, the bigger schedule than what she had to deal with in MMA. Right, Seth Rollins is giving you a little bit of an of insight on why it just didn't work with Ronda Rousey and why it was overall, unfortunately, a fail. So once Ronda realized she just couldn't hack it, she doesn't want to go back to that schedule or lifestyle. Now, all of a sudden, she's telling all that's what a lot of people are saying. So it's like the Taylor two tapes. A lot of what she's saying is truth. But is it too late? Did she already sit back and collect those fat paydays and collect the millions of dollars? It's one of those things where, you know, she's saying that many people, basically, this is what she's saying. Many people still feel the same way that I feel, but they're held captive by that company, so they can't speak out. It's interesting. And then she says how much of a shit show it is at WWE. I mean, you talk about not holding back is one thing. A scathing blow. You're going for like the knockout blow to WWE. Now, from the outside looking in, it was clear that Ronda Rousey and creative, Ronda and booking were never on the same page, right? Creative and booking failed Ronda. But I'll also be the first to say that Ronda, when she was given the opportunities and chances, there was that lack of connection with the crowd. And this is coming from somebody who supported Ronda from the jump, sometimes to a detriment, right? Nah, BC, we don't want to see her. It just ain't working. But... I saw the potential because she was believable, right? You would believe that somebody just like Ronda, not like, but Ronda herself would get into a ring and start whooping ass. You would believe that. So I liked that, but I also saw the other side, the flip of the coin. I understood why people felt there was no connection. There wasn't. But I always felt management-wise that they were treating her all right. They took, they took this person that had nothing to do with pro wrestling, just a fan from a whole nother sport Brought her in, chucked a boatload of money on her, and then put her in big time matchups. And at that point, whether creative or, or booking is giving you good stuff or not, it's sink or swim, right? We all know that. We've seen many wrestlers just get the, the crappiest of booking, but there was such a connection that WWE couldn't deny it, right? LA Knight is a recent example of that. Daniel Bryan around WrestleMania 30, another big example of that shit. There was even a microcosm of the community that were up in arms that Cody Rhodes wasn't finishing a story this year. So when there's that connection, there's just, it's a connection, right? And audibles have to be called and you have to start booking people differently, but you never got that with Rhonda. But I always felt that management was for the, again, if you put creative and booking aside, I thought management was giving her the house, but Rhonda felt differently. Everything she's saying we shouldn't be shocked, but what's what's stunning is that it's coming from Ronda. You would expect these words from somebody that's maybe been there 10, 15 years, right? Like if Naomi one day, if she didn't go back to WWE, because Jimmy's there, we, we get it, and she's back. But if you told me like Mercedes or Naomi were saying things like this with how they walked out and how long they were with the company, I probably wouldn't be too stunned, right? I'd just be like, okay, now we're finally getting the reasons why they just couldn't be there. But... Rhonda was there for such a short amount of time, and she's saying things like she's been there 15, 20 years. I think that's what's the most stunning, is that it's Rhonda who's saying this. <laughs> I mean, and that's one of those things where WWE will have to be careful now, right? We let this outsider in, they burned all the bridges to, to get to the place, they burned the house down, and then they left. So now WWE has to be very careful and cautious of who they allow in. Uh, to their little bubble because Rhonda came in, collected all the money, and then lit that bitch ablaze, walked out. <laughs> and that was absolute. She said how much of an absolute shit show it is at the WWE. And uh, she says, I think in. She says, I don't intend on going back so I can say anything and everything I feel. 
where everybody else that is still held captive by that organization cannot held captive. You say that when you're talking about like prisons, right? Like held captive. <laughs> Rhonda felt like she was held captive. Damn. If only other prisons gave three million dollar contracts, people would be signing up at that point. <laughs> Oh, man. Wild. But that's a big update, man. Um, Because we were not privy to that powerful paragraph quote from Rhonda in last night's upload. And for some reason, the tube decided to promote that upload last night. That's we don't get that on this channel, right? This platform, uh, the tube, they 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 don't like promoting the channel because we're too controversial. We're too edgy. We're too scary. We drop a lot of F-bombs. We have discussions that they don't want to touch. So it's easier if you just don't promote the channel. But I guess by accident, the channel was promoted, or that upload was. Over 15,000 of you guys have already caught that. That went up late last night. Over 15,000 of you guys caught that Rousey upload. Um, trashing and bashing WWE and Seth Rollins' response. Basically, um, why Ronda and WWE just didn't work. But over 15,000, you guys. So now I'm guessing the tube, right? There's absolute, like, there's panic and a meltdown at the tube headquarters this morning. <laughs> we accidentally, we accidentally promoted BC's channel last night. <laughs> oh, no. What do we do? Damage control. Where's Dakota Kai? Um, but uh, I appreciate, guys, every single one of you guys that uh, enjoyed the content, enjoyed the upload. Um. Yeah, it was a really good discussion, and I don't know, man. This just adds on to it. Ronda Rousey, uh, there's not holding back, and then there's just going for a knockout punch. Um, the discussion, I guess, in the community, from what I'm seeing, is is this justified? Should she be speaking out the way she is right now after taking all of that money and then deciding that this just isn't for me? So now I'm going to bash WWE. It's not about if the words are true or not. We've kind of heard these words from other individuals in different ways. But the timing, you know, we're trying to sell a book. Uh, I don't know, man. That's what the discussion really is. That's why there's a lot of back and forth in the community. But either way, man, that is a scathing... Um, that's a sk some scathing insight by Ronda Rousey. WWE is an absolute shit show, and I don't intend on going back. That is a quote. Let's move on, right? Let's get a little more positive, right? Basically, I gotta be more positive, man. Well, here's some positivity for you. It's over an AEW, man. Tony Khan. Listen to what he said about Mercedes. This has always been a pro Sasha Banks channel, by the way. So that will continue to be a pro Mercedes Monet channel. Um, he says that he looks forward to Mercedes being the face of AEW. He says, and I quote, the face of AEW. Now you could easily say, well, BC, he, should, he means one of, right? He could, he could plaster Kenny Omega next to, to her. He could plaster Brian Danielson. He could pr plaster Adam Copeland. Plaster Eddie Kingston for all we care, right? But he just means one of them. Of course. But I'm saying this is massive. You have where, where Mercedes is at right now. Her boss, the owner of the company she's at now, is saying that we view Mercedes as the face that runs the place. The face face of AEW. Do you see how massively that is different from how WWE viewed Mercedes Monet? Where WWE looked at her as mid-card at best just to give the title to Charlie Flair a thousand times, right? To make sure that in, in, in seven short years at the time, she had about 14 titles. And Sasha was good enough to just win the title and give it right back to Charlie. I think three different reigns in about three or four months. That's a real statistic. Sasha won it about three times within about three months, 80-something days, and they were all to give it back to Charlie, to ch just pat the stats. They never, they never gave Sasha Banks the ball. 
Never. Even when she was everybody's best match. Everybody's. Becky Lynch, Hell in a Cell. Bailey, number of times. Charlie, a number of times. Asuka, Zelina Vega, Carmella, go down the line. Everybody's best match was Sasha Banks. They just didn't care. There was just a lack of, there was a disconnect. And when Levesque McMahon, Paul Levesque McMahon had the chance to bring her back, to be that broker in the deal, right? Now, like, if he truly wanted her back by any means, however they had to work it out financially, Levesque McMahon would go to bat for her like he's done for so many others, but they just didn't see the value. They're like, eh, we gave her a good offer, they said. Gave her a good offer, and that's, that's just it. And Tony Khan was not only willing to fork up the money, but he was willing to to let her do what she is passionate about, which means not even being restricted to AEW, but she can wrestle in Japan, Ireland if she wants. Go up to the UK for a few weeks. Just let us know in advance. She gets to travel the world and do what she actually loves, professional wrestling. And you have a do where WWE clearly mistreated Sasha Banks, the character, right? That's not saying, right, people go, oh, well, she, she, uh, she got a boatload of money and she took it. The same thing we're saying about Ronda, right? She took, a, she took the money. They gave her the showcase. Um, what more could you ask for? Y- you give her the ball. What do you mean? What, I, 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 Stunad? What do you mean? What more could you ask for? Charlie Flair for 10 years has been on the side of all the trailers, right? On all the marketing, on all the promotional And the fans still can't really connect, right? That's why she's flipping face and heel all the time. That's why they're putting her with people like Asuka all the time. Even when Asuka held the Raw Women's Championship, when Charlie came back, they booted Lana from Asuka and they paired Asuka and Charlie so that Charlie could try to get some of that cheer rub from Asuka. You wouldn't have to do these tricks if Charlie was just truly the face of the women's division like WWE was trying to plant. Whereas Mercedes, Sasha never got any of that. You go to the shows. You don't see her on the front of that marketing. Uh, on the, uh, what do you call that? The little, the little pamphlet you get when you get in there. The program. You didn't see her on the program. The opening signatures for the live events. No, it was, it was Charlotte everywhere. Right? These little things are not so little, man. Why would you not give somebody like Sasha the ball when she is everybody's best match? She's incredible, and you're not pushing her as such. Whereas Tony Khan says, I view her in that same paragraph that, she, that he said he wants her to be the face of AEW. That same paragraph, Tony Khan says, I view Mercedes Monet as one of the greatest wrestlers in the world. Could you imagine if Vinny Mac just came out and said that? Did you, I mean, he doesn't go on any interviews and talk about any wrestler, but could you imagine if just Paul Levesque McMahon in an interview just said, man, Mercedes Monet, one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet. One of the faces of WWE, you know what I mean? Like, when you're so good, when you're everybody's best match, you are the common denominator. Wouldn't you expect to get that at work? Some recognition that's higher than others, right? Some perks feel like you're valued doesn't matter at your job, but if you're going above and beyond, if you're the best employee at what you do, right? Or one of the best, however you view it, wouldn't you want to be treated like that? You go above and beyond because it's just in your character. You're not trying to make everybody look bad. You just go to work. You want to whoop ass so you can get out and feel like you did something. I don't care if you're going to McDonald's and flipping burgers. You want to be the best burger flipper on the planet at that moment, right? Otherwise, you're just kind of lugging through the day, watching the clock as it doesn't go by, right? You might as you have a better shot at watching paint dry or a pot of water boiling because that clock is not going to go any faster. You might as well show up to work and whoop ass. I don't care what you're doing. And if you're really good at it, if you're busting your ass, you hope that management takes notice. There's got to be some elevation for somebody who's whooping ass at what they do. That's common sense. That's logic. But common sense isn't so common in 2024. It is refreshing to hear TK Tony Khan say, we view her as one of the greatest wrestlers on the planet and the face of AEW. That is a quote. Pretty badass. 
Now, if the words hold true, it's a game changer. If you let Mercedes be Mercedes in AEW, that is only going to help elevate the AEW women's locker room and that division. And a better women's division will make a better company, and that'll only help AEW in the long run. This is a game changer if they stick with it, because once she starts wrestling, she captivates. Just what she does. Speaking of AEW, I was not able to catch the entire show last night. Wednesdays are just hard, like Tuesday. There's just some nights where I just have a lot of side business I have to take care of uh, and, and things that have nothing to do with pro wrestling, I assure you, and much more important, unfortunately. <laughs> but Wednesdays are hard, but I was able to catch a few segments, and thankfully I caught the entire main event. Edge, Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage, TNT Championship I Quit match. And man, it was so refreshing. I loved it. I absolutely... I love this because there were so many moments where they just let things breathe. They gave it ample time. It was the edge of old school. And you just knew that they wanted to go above and beyond. They wanted to give fans something special. And that's exactly what they did. Even during breaks, they had pitcher and pitcher. They would go into the women's uh, uh, bathroom. <laughs> the camera didn't go in. But it shows a bunch of women flying out of the bathroom. It was just little things like that were so special. They went into the penalty box because they were in Canada, Toronto, I believe. And they go into the penalty box and there's a Bruins fan. It's a wrestler that's planted, but he's got a, He's acting like he's a fan and he's got a Bruins shirt. So Edge takes the Bruins shirt off, puts it on to, uh, puts it on to Christian. And then there's a, who was it? Maple Leafs, whatever it was. They, he takes off another jersey, puts that on, Canada roars. And they start having a hockey fight. It was so awesome, man. Um, you know, those little things, it's, it's fun. You know they're totally plants, but it's still fun. Never would you see a Bruins fan right there in Canada, but... Actually, maybe. Anyway, it was just fun, man. Toward the end, Edge is just, just wabaka. Left and right, a boot to the nuts of Cage. But Na Cage will not quit until finally... Uh, Copeland takes out Spike. Sp it's, if you don't know who Spike is, he takes out Spike. It's exactly what you would think. Like this big, uh, not a pole, just a, almost like a wooden stick or something. It, it's half bat, half pole, half stick. And it's got the, the sp it's not even barbed wire, there's spikes. And he takes this thing and he just winds up and nails Cage right in the cajones, man. Cage is like, I quit, I quit. <laughs> Uh, it was like, well, Copeland actually went above his head. He was going to just deck him in this dome piece. And that's when Cage is like, all right, I quit. But it was Spike to the Bulls that took out Cage. And uh, I just like this, man. Uh, Copeland walks away with the TNT championship. But that just feels like a main event. You know, there was post-match extracurricular activities as well. But... But that was, yeah, I mean, that's just captivating, man. Because they just, they had fun with it. You know, they, they got innovative. And I think that's what pro wrestling is missing these days. Just fun. Just have fun, man. Get creative. What you get to do in front of an audience, that is so special. Get creative. Have fun. Ball out. I shouldn't say ball out. Christian Cage is probably still feeling those shots. But that I really enjoyed last night. Good main event. Copeland, Cage, very good. What I didn't like last night, there was a Jericho hook match. Jericho takes the L for hook, right? He does the deed. Now, we, we're in a day and age in pro wrestling where that's just, we use cute terminology to sound smart, right? Like passing the torch, right? Doing the deed for. Okay, so every legend or every old timer has to do the job for every new wrestler these days. That's something that has to stop, at least for some talents. I say this all the time for John Cena. Cena cannot come back every time and take an L for a new up-and-coming wrestler because you don't know if they're up-and-coming. You're hoping they are, and you can only do so much. Cena comes back, and he does the job for Austin Theory at WrestleMania, and to this day, it did nothing for Austin Theory. Still crickets, they still pipe in booze. He did the ultimate job for Solo Sokoa. 
Didn't just do the D, didn't just lose. He got annihilated by Solo Sokoa. And then Paul Levesque McMahon put Solo Sokoa on a 23-match losing streak. Maybe even more. I stopped counting after 23 matches. 23-match losing streak. Why would Levesque McMahon do Cena dirty like that? After Cena did that, you bump up Solo. Instead, Levesque McMahon said, no, we're going to put you on a losing streak now. We're going to make John Cena look like an idiot. How did you lose to Solo? Everybody's beating him. So he took the ultimate gamble with people like Theory and people like Solo. And and, and when he comes back, people are already claiming he should put this person over. He should put that person over. BC sees it differently. I say when Cena comes back, he starts putting himself over again. Cena needs to be John Cena because he's not retiring in the next year or two. He's not. He's going to have matches. And if he just keeps losing to everybody, you are losing the luster of John Cena. You are doing him dirty because you're doing the whole process dirty. John Cena can still be and should still be John Cena the ass kicker. You should put people over at the right times. He cannot keep coming back and losing to everybody. It's going to be a joke. Within a year, people are going to say, oh, Cena's coming. Who's he going to lose to? Tazawa? Is it going to be Kaiser? You laugh, but that's the truth. That's the trajectory we're heading. If it's Austin Theory, if it's Solo Sokoa, where does it end? When John Cena comes back, string together multiple victories. He's got to start being John Cena again. And then when he knows he's about to hang it up, then you can do an ultimate loss and really bet the house that this person you lose to is going to take it to the next level. You can only hope. You know, when Taker did that for Roman Reigns at WrestleMania years ago, it didn't work. It wasn't until Roman did what we all said he had to do for years, which was turn heel, when Roman started to click. But at that time, when they were just forcing Roman Reigns and they just had Undertaker do the deed, hoping that was going to do the trick, it backfired. And that Monday on Raw, for about nine minutes, the dude was booed out of the building. If anything, it had the adverse effect. And the same for Jericho last night. Jericho loses to Hook. Now, I'm not saying Hook should have lost this match. What I'm saying is this match should not have been. Jericho versus Hook, nobody wins. Hook, you don't have lose. Jericho can't lose. Not to Hook in that situation. Middle of a dynamite. And Jericho is losing to Hook. And then they like shake hands afterwards or something goofy where the crowd was totally checked out. If you guys didn't catch it. The crowd was just checked out. There was no reaction to it. So then you had the mutual respect error kick in, right? We had a good contest. Shake hands. Just doesn't go with Jericho. And if you're going to have Jericho lose to a hook, you would think it's a big program, maybe a a, a pay-per-view. Make it mean something. Watching Jericho last night lose to hook in the middle of dynamite and just watch him just kind of like be disheveled and shaking hands, no react. It was like, whoa, how far Jericho has fallen. You don't want to see that. This is a dude that beat The Rock in, in Stone Cold in the same night, dude. <laughs> same night. You know he's not in his prime. You know he's older. We get it. But it was just, it was so odd. And I'm pretty sure a lot of that crowd in attendance was just like, that was weird. You know, good for Hook. Well, that was weird. Jericho with a, just a simplistic loss, shake hands, and just rides off. Just weird. If you're already losing to Hook in the middle of a dynamite, I mean, how much more lower can you go when you do call it a quits? And again, much love and respect to Hook. I'm not saying again that he should have lost. The match should not have been if that's just the, if that's the outcome. I'm just tired of these ultra legends losing matches where they just have no business even being in let alone losing it's weird to me not saying they never should lose but there's times and situations for it it's very odd so i love the edge adam copeland christian match the jericho thing is still befuddling to me and then mercedes monet by the way we talked to mercedes monet a few minutes ago and what tony khan said she actually had a promo last night and she just talked about the gratitude, how thankfully, thankful she is to be back because she had a near career ending injury 10 months ago, well documented on the channel. And she says, and I quote, and first of all, there was a video package to go along with what TK said about Mercedes and, and having her be the face of AEW. There was a video package that played during the promo and 
it absolutely it it, it showcased Mercedes in a rock esque view, right? Almost like what you would see with the rock limos, um, red carpets, designer outfits, paparazzi, right? I mean, it showcased Mercedes like a true superstar, not just inside the ring, but outside. So it was a really eye-opening video package. They really went all out to showcase that this is a uh, AEW. You got to call them wrestlers, but this is a superstar. Yeah, you see what I did? They really want you to know that. You don't got to sell many people that actually know pro wrestling. We already know that. But it's really interesting, man. They dedicated that time to make that video package, showcase that during her promo. And then she says, and I quote, I'm not here to start an evolution. Referencing WWE, obviously. I'm not here to start an evolution. No, I've done that before. I'm here to start a women's global revolution. Global, because again, she wants to wrestle all over the world. And apparently, Tony Khan is going to allow it. She says, and I quote, you mess with my business, you go bankrupt. Love that line. That's, of course, to um, the unfinished business with Willow. And then, of course, Julia Hart and Blue Sky um, tried to tarnish that last week. So in this promo, the lights go out. Julia and Sky Blue uh, appear. They try to jump Mercedes. Mercedes fends them off. Willow and Statlander come out because they had a matchup on Rampage later in the night. Statlander and Willow, Sky and uh, Julia. I think that was like a street fight too. Wasn't able to catch it, but uh, that was being promoted. So they kind of, two birds with one stone here, right? You set up the, the, the Willow and Mercedes story even more, but you also sell your tag team match for later in the night because while Mercedes was focusing on Sky Blue and Julia, Willow had a steel chair to the back of Mercedes. And when Mercedes turned around, Willow quickly uh, threw the chair down. And Mercedes just like, you were going to hit me? Got my eye on you. So, you know, little seeds planted. But that looks to be the first big match for Mercedes that, that people can really sink their teeth into. Willow, you gotta believe, will finally be taking the L. After what will nearly be a year at that point, Willow will be taking that L to Mercedes when it's said and done. All right, that's what I got for you guys, man. That was a lot to take in, I understand. I appreciate you guys big time, man. Until next time, and there will be that next time. Top guys, we're out. Hold up, by the way, uh, NXT guys. Got to even mention this. NXT, I do have the I have the number 569,000 viewers for NXT this week. It is down what did they pull last week, 575, 80 something. They were in the fives last week too. I don't have the actual number. But that is actually down from last week. I don't know how that's possible. But 569,000 this week. It's the lowest total audience for NXT of the entire year thus far. The lowest audience, 569. If you're looking for a bit of good news for this rating, 18 to 49 demo was up. 18 to 49. So some younger folk had their dates cancel on them. <laughs> some of the younger, younger peeps were actually home watching some NXT. So that's a little bit of positive. But the 569, lowest viewership of the year. NXT continues to go the, the wrong way. In terms of numbers. All right, until next time, there will be that next time. Top guys, we're out. BC saying check your poof.